Is Venice underwater? Is Venice sinking? Is Venice flooding? These are questions people are constantly asking about this iconic city. So I decided to dig into the facts and find out what's really going on in Venice. And how do these buildings seem to float? Just look at this. Or this. It's absolutely incredible. Imagine a city not built on solid ground, but literally floating on water. Where streets are canals and boats take the place of cars. This is Venice, Italy. The story of Venice begins in the 5th century AD, during a time where scenes like these were part of daily life in Europe. It was a time of great upheaval in the Roman Empire as barbarian invasions swept across northern Italy, forcing the people to flee their mainland. In their search for safety, they found safety in a cluster of small, unstable islands in the Venetian Lagoon. Take a look at this map. They went right to this point. These islands, though far from ideal, became their sanctuary. From these beginnings, Venice rose to become one of the most powerful and wealthiest cities in the world. Yet its foundation was unlike any other. No solid ground, no fresh water, and no roads. Just a series of muddy, marshy islands. At the time, it might not have seemed like the smartest choice, but hey, they made it work. And today, Venice stands as one of the most iconic cities on the planet. In the year 452, the Roman Empire was crumbling, and northern Italy was under siege by the Huns. Entire cities were wiped out, forcing the inhabitants to flee. Eventually, they found refuge in the Venetian Lagoon. But these refugees faced an immediate challenge. The islands they landed on were made of soft clay, barely strong enough to support a person, let alone an entire city. To survive, they had to come up with a brilliant engineering solution to make the ground suitable for building. Honestly, if I were them, I might have just gone elsewhere. But as history shows, they had no other options. Ocean navigation was reserved for the elites, and airplanes? Well, we're talking about the year 452, so let's not even go there. Venice was quite literally their only option, so they had no choice but to make it work. Here! The answer lay in timber piles. These wooden piles were carefully selected for their water-resistant qualities. Venetians gathered large timber piles from the nearby forests and hammered them deep into the ground. The piles were driven through the soft silt and mud until they reached a harder layer of clay, about 4 to 5 meters deep. That is, about 16 feet. But the true genius of the design was how these piles were packed closely together. They compressed the surrounding clay, pushing out water and making the ground more stable. Above the piles, the Venetians placed wooden planks and then added a layer of limestone, which wouldn't let water seep through. As a result, this created a solid foundation on which they could build their city. Marvelous for their time, right? But wait, we're not even close to being done with their ingenuity. It's been over a thousand years since they hammered those timber piles into the ground, and guess what? Most of them are still perfectly intact. How is that even possible? Well, here's the crazy part. Even though these piles were submerged in water, wood only decays when it's exposed to both air and water. Therefore, the lack of oxygen beneath the waterlogged ground kept the timber preserved. Over time, the wood absorbed minerals from the lagoon's water, gradually petrifying and hardening, almost like stone. So yeah, even today, many of those original wooden piles are still holding up Venice. Pretty wild, right? Okay, so Venetians had their foundation set and done. Time for them to build up their homes. Not so fast was not as easy as it sounds. Initially, they used wood for their homes, but frequent fires made them rethink their approach. Eventually, they turned to brick and stone. However, to prevent the buildings from sinking into the soft ground, they had to make them lightweight. Over time, strict building codes were put in place to keep Venice standing tall. Literally, houses could be no more than three stories high, and they had to be built using lightweight, hollow bricks, and I think you know why at this point. If not, it was to avoid putting too much weight on the unstable ground. Instead of using heavy cement, they used lime motor, which is more flexible and allowed the buildings to shift slightly as the ground moved. And here's something cool. The interior walls were built with a crisscross pattern of wood, allowing them to flex like a trellis. Talk about some clever engineering. Any civil engineers out there? Drop a hey in the comments. 
However, one of the most fascinating features of Venetian buildings is their facades. Just look at the elegant stone fronts with these large windows. How were they kept from toppling over? They were anchored to the floors with iron rods, ensuring that the weight was evenly distributed and the buildings wouldn't collapse. Now you understand a little more about the engineering of the first structures of their homes, but they kept growing. Just look at the current video of the city. There are even a couple of beautiful churches in the Venetian landscapes. They needed bridges and ways to go from structure to structure. Now, while the early Venetians relied on boats to move between islands, as the population grew and the city expanded, they needed a more efficient way to travel. At first, the islands were so close together that people could cross between them on horseback during low tide. In fact, for the first 500 years of Venice's existence, there were no bridges. The first attempt at bridging the islands was a simple pontoon bridge made of boats and wood, connecting Venice's two largest sections and allowing quick access to the financial hub of Rialto. This temporary solution was later replaced with a wooden bridge, and finally with a much stronger stone bridge. It took over 12,000 timber piles and 10,000 tons of stone to build the Rialto Bridge, which remains one of Venice's most iconic landmarks today. Following the success of the Rialto Bridge, other stone bridges began popping up, transforming Venice into a compact city built entirely around canals instead of roads. There is a discrepancy in the total number of bridges in Venice, and the city does not disclose an official number. But there are between 417 to 472 bridges in Venice. One of Venice's greatest challenges, however, was the lack of fresh water. Surrounded by seawater, the city has no natural springs or rivers to rely on for drinking water. At first, water had to be delivered by boat from the mainland, but as the population grew, this became unsustainable. Once again, the Venetians found a clever solution. They, they used the city's public squares, originally intended as grazing grounds for animals, to collect rainwater. Underneath each square, large basins were dug out and lined with clay to make them waterproof. Layers of sand and stones were added to filter the rainwater as it flowed into the basins. The roofs of nearby buildings were also fitted with gutters that directed water onto the squares, maximizing collection. Each square had a central well. And by the 16th century, there were over 600 wells across Venice, providing fresh water for its residents. Every morning, water maids would gather water from the wells and deliver it to homes throughout the city. This ingenious system kept the city supplied with clean water. Now who will be the first to drink in celebration? Despite the elegant beauty of Venice, its early streets and canals were far from clean. Like in most medieval cities, people would throw their waste, including food scraps, urine, and feces, into the streets or directly into the canals. Over time, the Venetians adapted by relying on the tides to manage their waste. During high tide, water from the lagoon would rise into the canals, helping to flush away some of the waste. As the tide went down, it carried much of the waste into the lagoon. While the system worked to some extent, it wasn't perfect, and Venice continued to face sanitation challenges for centuries. These days, there is a whole new way of waste management in Venice. But as I started researching these issues, it would be a whole new video for this. If you're interested in it, let me know in the comments. What makes Venice even more amazing is that many of these engineering solutions created over a thousand years ago still work today. The wooden piles, stone bridges, rainwater systems, and waste tunnels are still in use. From a simple refugee settlement to a global trading empire, Venice remains a symbol of human ingenuity and resilience. Venice is a city that should not exist, yet here it stands, a marvel of human ingenuity and determination. From its humble beginnings as a refuge for displaced people to its rise as a powerful touristic hub, Venice has defied the odds time and time again. Its foundation, quite literally built on water, is a testament to the creativity and resourcefulness of its people. The engineering solutions that allowed Venice to thrive, wooden piles, bridges, rainwater systems, and waste management are as impressive today as they were centuries ago. As you stroll through the narrow streets and glide along its canals, remember that beneath your feet lies a city held together by centuries of innovation. Venice's story is one of survival, and as the world continues to change, it remains a symbol of what human ingenuity can achieve.